Chairman, uh, the Administrative Procedures Act is important, and I look forward to our hearing today and hearing from our witnesses. But I will tell you this, what's more important is the fact that the Justice Department continues to treat parents as domestic terrorists. And the fact that the Attorney General hasn't been called back by our chairman to answer our questions when 41 days ago he came in here and misled us, and more importantly, misled the American people, I just can't figure out. I want the committee to understand this. In a 24-day time period, here's what happened. On September 29th, the National School Boards Association writes a letter to the President of the United States asking the President to use the Patriot Act to go after moms and dads. One of the individuals who signed that letter, Ms. Garcia, two days later, on October 1st, gets a plum position on a board at the Department of Education. Three days after that letter is sent to the President of the United States, asking him to treat parents as terrorists, the weekend of October 2nd and 3rd, Tim Langan, the head of the counterterrorism division at the FBI, is already having conversations with the Justice Department on how to implement the letter sent from the School Board Association to the President of the United States. So think about that. The head of the counterterrorism division at the FBI is already talking about how to implement the memo that hasn't yet been sent from the Attorney General. And we know this because of questioning our colleague, Ms. Stefanik, had of Mr. Langan in front of the House Intel Committee. And of course, on October 4th, five days after the letter was sent, we have the now famous memo from the Attorney General where he says, we want to open, send to all 94 judicial districts around the country, every single district, we want a dedicated line of communication for threat reporting on parents, a snitch line on moms and dads. All that happens in five days. Now, I've been around government a while, and I've never seen government move that fast in my life. Two weeks later, October 20th, because of a brave whistleblower, there was, we know about an email sent from the same guy, Mr. Langan, the head of the counterterrorism division, the FBI. He sends an email to special agents in charge, FBI agents around the country saying, put this threat tag, this designation, this label on parents who show up at school board meetings and speak out against this curriculum that they don't want their children taught. The next day, pretty important day, October 21st, the attorney general comes in front of the House Judiciary Committee and says this, quote, I could not imagine any circumstance where parents are treated as domestic terrorists. The only problem is, the only problem is 24 hours earlier, the head of the counterterrorism division had sent out an email saying exactly the opposite, using counterterrorism measures against parents, against moms and dads. And of course, the next day, October 22nd, the National School Board Association, because of the political fallout, they thought it was going to be a political winner. It turned out to be a political loser for them. The National School Board Association withdraws the letter, and they say in that letter, we regret and apologize for the letter we sent on September 29th. All that happens in 24 days. Again, I have never seen government move that fast in my life. Now, those 24 days are just part of the story, though, because the most important part is what happened before September 29th. The most important part is the coordination between the White House and the School Board Association before the letter was ever sent. Here's what we know from FOIA requests, from communications by, made by Mr. Slavin and Ms. Garcia. Here's what Mr. Slavin said. The White House requested additional information from the National School Board Association before the letter was sent. And Ms. Garcia said this, quote, the National School Board Association communicated for several weeks with the White House before the letter was sent. In other words, this thing didn't start. I mean, this is the real story. The National School Board Association letter wasn't the catalyst for this flurry of activity by the Department of Justice against moms and dads. It wasn't the catalyst. It was just the pretext. It didn't originate with the School Board Association. It started with the Biden administration and with the Garland Justice Department. They were looking for an excuse, looking for a pretext to target, to threat tag moms and dads. And the fact that it's been 41 days since the Attorney General sat at that desk and lied to this committee and we haven't called him back, I, I just can't believe it. So, Mr. Chairman, I hope, I hope the Chairman of the full committee will ask Mr. Garland to come back and answer our questions. Because we have seen this pattern before, frankly, 
And I know the Democrats all day like to make fun of this, but this, we've seen this pattern before. We saw this with the Justice Department in the, Biden, in the Obama-Biden uh, administration. We saw Mr. Comey and Mr. McCabe. We saw that Justice Department, that FBI, used the dossier as a pretext to do what they wanted to do, namely go spy on the Trump campaign. They knew the dossier was garbage, but they used that as the pretext, as the excuse to go do what they already wanted to do. Same pattern here. Exact same pattern here. They get the school board association to write the letter, oh, here's our excuse to do what we wanted to do. Go after moms and dads. Because we don't like them objecting to critical race theory being taught in our schools. But you know what? The one thing they didn't bargain for, the one thing they didn't bargain for was the fact that moms and dads says, we don't care what you do. We don't care if you try to chill our speech. We don't care if you put a threat tag on us, label us domestic terrorists, use counterterrorism measures from the FBI against us. We don't care. We're going to stand up for our kids. The, 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 the fallout from this, the backlash from this from, was unbelievable. And of course, we saw it play out in Virginia. So again, I would just say it's been 41 days, Mr. Chairman, 41 days since the Attorney General misled us, the Judiciary Committee misled the American people. I hope, I hope our next hearing, whenever that is, Mr. Garland is in here answering a lot of questions we have. I'm sure the Democrats have some questions too, but the fact that he hasn't been brought back is wrong and everyone knows it. I yield back. Just to be clear so that the record is, is complete, there are those of us who have reviewed all of these materials and believe that the Attorney General testified consistent with everything that's contained in those documents. But that's I mean, for another day. Would it, would it, would uh, it is, for a question? Would I'm certainly happy to yield to, to the Chairman of the full committee. Chairman Yield, I just want to point out that what everyone thinks of what Mr. Jordan said has nothing to do with the subject matter of this hearing. Well Chairman Yield, it Chairman is Yield. now my pleasure to introduce Mr. today's Chairman, witnesses. Isn't that kind of our first? Something? Our first witness is David Michaels, a professor at George Washington. Could not University imagine American any circumstance where parents are treated, treated as domestic Additionally, terrorists. Additionally, he has held numerous the posts day before the counterterrorism the division the FBI. Is out of order. If you would just yield for one sec, I would like I to respond to what I'm you said. I will not. I'm introducing witnesses. Our, I'll begin from the beginning so everyone can hear it. Our first witness is David Michaels, a professor at George Washington University's Milken Institute School of Public Health. Additionally, he's held numerous posts at other institutions, including the City of New York Medical School, the Albert Einstein College of Medicine, and the ICANN School of Medicine at Mount Sinai. Professor Michaels also has extensive experience working with executive agencies. He served as the Assistant Secretary for Occupational Safety and Health.